I told her we can do this the hard way or the easy way. She said, I want it both ways. Hey, one time, my kind of woman. Let's get into that thing. Let's go. Boom. Whenever you start your pilot journey, you're going to immediately notice one thing. And that's the fact that some things are going to be very, very difficult, hard, and challenging for you, while other things are going to be relatively easy. Now, the difference between these two categories is going to vary from person to person, given what your background is, your strengths, and just a lot of other variables that go into it. But you can pretty much generalize these specific areas, thinking about what's going to be the hardest part of becoming a pilot and what's going to be the easiest part. This video is meant for you to kind of get your head around exactly what you're signing up for and how you can step forward from those challenges, meet them head on, and then basically run over and overcome those obstacles. His Get into that thing. Let go. Hey, by far, the number one thing, the hardest thing to becoming a pilot is learning all the knowledge and ground school things that you must know. The knowledge and the theory. This can be the hardest and most challenging part for any one who decides that they want to become a pilot by four. And there's a reason for that. This is the number one reason why this channel was even created to help you with the knowledge and the ground portion and about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. It's on this channel. And the reason why is simply because it's almost like learning a whole new world. Think about if you were born into a situation where you were born on a nice remote island with beautiful crystal clear water and you spent all your days fishing, surfing, scuba diving, and the way you got around on the island, you just walked wherever you wanted to go. You walked on that beautiful, clear, soft, black sand. So that's the kind of lifestyle that you grew up with your whole life. And then all of a sudden, when you got into young adulthood, you decided to yourself, you know what? I wanna travel, I wanna go and live in the United States. So then you pick a city, you pick New York City, so you fly out to JFK as soon as you get to the airport and walk outside the airport, you begin to hear like all these buses and cars and trains and just the hustle and bustle of the city. You get excited, but you also start to embark on a whole new world, a world where people are actually driving cars and then you decide that you want to learn how to drive. So just think about how stressful that can be and how much knowledge you got to learn if you grew up your entire life. Again, the way you got around your little small remote island was on foot. Now you got to learn how to do the mechanics of this car in addition to learning all the rules and regulations of the, of the road. Think about the things that you take for granted. You may look at a sign and say, oh, what does that sign mean? Oh, that's a stop sign? What about that sign right there? Why does it say speed limit 35 on this street, but then on the next street, it says speed limit 75? Like all these different rules and regulations that you're gonna have to kind of absorb and learn. Just think if all that was foreign to you. You know, that's the concept that you're getting into, and that's what you're really getting into when you decide to learn how to fly. Because even though you could have been around planes your whole life, and maybe you flew commercially and traveled and did a lot of different things, you were never pilot in command and you never had to learn about the logistics and the knowledge that goes along with it. Who cares what the weather is and the frequencies and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're just gonna jump on a plane, sit back, relax, watch a movie, sleep, and then have a good time. It's a whole different level of responsibility when you're actually pilot in command about learning these things. And when they're foreign to you like that, that's what you're absorbing. All of that knowledge of something that you've just never been immersed with before. And that is why it's so difficult and why it is so challenging. Do not become discouraged. This is one of the most challenging and hardest parts for pretty much anyone. All you have to do, watch all the videos on this channel. Over 100 videos, pretty much about everything that you need to know to become a pilot. It breaks everything down in a very simple, clear, and easy way to understand why you can also have a little fun while you're learning that thing. Hey, but do not get discouraged at any point along the journey because know that it's hard for everyone for that simple reason we just discussed. It's just a significant download of information all at one time. Break it down into individual chunks. Learn as you go. If you run across a roadblock, use one of the reference videos on this page as to help you get through it for another perspective. Stay motivated and stay ready. And most importantly, stay disciplined. Hey, immediately after the knowledge portion, the second hardest part for you to become a pilot without a doubt is probably radio comms. Again, same situation as to why the knowledge portion is, is hard. It's a whole nother language. Learning the language of being a pilot. 
and then you jump on the comms in the very beginning and everyone's abbreviating everything and talking and speaking so quickly it makes everything even more intimidating for you so you want to pull back on that a little bit as well and understand that these are simple roadblocks that everyone has the knowledge portion the radio portion you're not alone in any of these things again a plethora of videos on this channel that can help you get through any of that radio portion and make things a little bit easy for you and way less intimidating so don't get discouraged in that as well it's just a matter of you getting acclimated to it again nice tip for you always be exposed to this even when you're not flying so on those days each and every day if you can pop open that live ATC app and begin to listen for just 10 to 15 minutes a day it will pay significant dividends for you just think about if you were learning a foreign language but each and every day you just practice 10 15 minutes over time that is going to add up significantly for you at the end of the week at the end of the month at the end of several different months repetition and consistency it isn't about going out and doing all this ground school and knowledge and learning all the stuff about radio comms in one shot you spent hours like say you spent all day saturday trying to learn something that's not really going to help you as much versus if you spread it out throughout the course of your training you were just consistent every day you didn't do a whole lot 10 15 minutes here 15 20 minutes there it adds up that compound interest over time the whole time that you're learning is going to help you in the long run one of the biggest challenges and one of the things that can help you with the challenge of radio comms is the limited exposure that's the challenge the fact that you're only exposed to radio comms when you're actually flying the airplane but if you can use these technology and the apps and things that are available to you where you're actually listening into radios each and every day even on the days you do not fly that is one of the keys to make it less challenging and it's not going to be as hard have no fear a numero tres of the hardest things about becoming a pilot getting those smooth landings landings in general is going to be challenging for a lot of people for multiple different reasons but getting smooth landings regardless of what type of landing you're doing whether it's a short field soft field short approach whatever you're doing making them all consistently smooth that is the most challenging thing but here's the secret about that even after you get your pilot's license they're not all going to be smooth <laughs> you're going to have those that are not so smooth but getting it to that point where you can consistently get the majority of them the overwhelming majority of them to be nice and smooth that is a significant challenge and there's a lot of reasons for that one just think about all the variables that can make a landing that is on track to be nice and smooth can just throw it off a little bit maybe there's a little bit of crosswind that picks up right on short and final right before you're getting right when you're in ground effect it's, it's just a little nice wind just come breeze comes through and just throws you off course a little bit and all of a sudden it's not as smooth as you wanted it to be it can be pretty much anything that can just throw you off kilter just a little bit but the more you continue to try to be as precise as possible and most importantly the first step and the first obstacle make sure all of your landings are safe Make sure you're doing all the safety measures in, in place. You're trying to land on the first third of the runway. If not, then you're immediately going around. You're being as safe as possible. You're giving yourself enough real estate and enough room to maneuver where you're not feeling crammed, where you have to drop it down tight, particularly when you're just learning how to land. Making sure you're following all your checklists and your flows and everything that you want to do on landing. Making sure you're working that pattern and practicing everything right. So practice the mechanics and the safety measures first. And if you do that, then the percentage Precision and the smooth quality of your landings will just come over time. That's all you got to worry about. At the beginning, when you're not having a smooth landing, you can become incredibly frustrated and start to think to yourself that you're never going to get it and that it's very difficult. And then you have to do different types of landings and you may have trouble just getting the normal landing down. But then you have to do all these multitude of different types of landings and that becomes even more challenging. So having smooth landings on everything is definitely one of the hardest things for pretty much everyone. Just like most things in life, it can't all be hard. There have to be some parts that are relatively easy, right? And that's what we're about to get into now. If those are the hard things, the knowledge portion's hard, the radios, getting smooth landings, what will be considered the easy parts, the parts that may come easy for most people? Believe it or not, the actual mechanics of flying the airplane itself will be relatively easy once you begin to understand the mechanisms in place. The plane wants to fly. It was designed to fly. If you're ever sitting inside the aircraft, particularly with your instructor, and you have a long runway in front of you, practice something. 
just get onto the runway and just do your procedures as if you're getting ready to take off, but don't actually pull back on the yoke just yet. Do everything that you would normally do. Your mixture's full, rich, throttle in, everything is in, you're just going down the runway, looking at your instruments, and just feel what the aircraft does. Even if you don't pull back on the yoke at all, it's gonna start to almost lift off the ground itself. Why? Our boy Bernoulli and Newton already told us how lift happens when air gets under and over those wings. It wants to fly. It wants to take off. It wants to do what it do. You're not even doing anything and it wants to fly. That's why you don't have to be a deft grip on the controls. Gently and it will come right off the ground simply because it wants to fly and it was designed to fly. So once you begin to like, get your head around the mechanics of flight and how things happen, you would start to notice that the actual mechanics of flying an airplane are relatively easy. And as a pilot, you don't have to do much when it comes to that. If you just kind of think into your head, you can even put it in layman's terms. Pilots are notoriously lazy. They want the easiest path of resistance, the least amount of resistance possible to get from point A to point B. And you don't have to do much by just relaxing on those controls versus thinking that you have to fight the controls or if you don't have a depth grip, the, the airplane is just gonna go in a, some odd direction or anything like that. So once you get your head around that, that part can be real easy for you. Hey, when it comes to the next thing that's the easiest part about becoming a pilot, it all lies within the adventure itself of flying. That is gonna make a lot of things easy for you. Think about what you're signing up to do. You're actually learning how to fly an airplane. That is something that only a small percentage of the world population can do. And by signing up to do this, there's gonna be a lot of adventure involved. And what that means to you is that even when it sucks, it doesn't suck because you're actually flying an aircraft. So even when you're in the air and you're becoming maybe frustrated because you're not nailing a maneuver the way that you want to nail it or that landing didn't go exactly the way you planned or something else happened, just think about and be grateful for the moment and thankful for what you're actually doing at the time. And that is going to make your journey a lot easier when it comes to becoming a pilot. Hey, there's a lot of worse things that you can be doing in life than flying around in an airplane. That is probably one of the most exciting and adventurous things that is ever going to happen to you in your life. And that is what's going to make the entire journey of becoming a pilot easy because even when it sucks, it doesn't suck. And these are the hardest and easiest things about becoming a pilot. Subscribe to this channel.